Oh, hey there. What's going on guys? And welcome back to the Fiskars Axe Rehandling, Rehafting video. So, as you can see, I was just uh, scouting out some wood there. We're burning the last little bits of um, whatever that is, fiber reinforced plastic molded handle or whatever the hell's on that head. I'm not even sure. Burning the last of that off the axe head right now. Uh, I was just over at the brush pile from that tree that uh, I cut off the path a couple videos ago. Now ideally I would think for rehafting an axe um, in the Great Lakes St. Lawrence forest region which is where we are right now you would probably want to try and find an ash tree where I am. Uh, hickory generally doesn't occur. The odd one here and there but none on this property that I've ever seen. <coughs> So we're just going to go for a good chunk of hardwood. Um, this isn't going to be super bushcrafty or it's going to be practical. Uh, as practical as rehandling a Fiskars is because in reality, unless you are, you crashed a plane, it's the only ax you have. You have no way of getting back to civilization. That's about the only scenario where I think you're actually going to bother doing this. If you're on a backpacking trip, like even a week long trip, it's going to take a lot of time to rehandle an axe. Maybe over the course of the trip, you come up with something. Um, but generally, you're probably not going to bother. I am not a ultralight backpacker by any means. When I go out, I've usually got a 12 inch knife, um, one saw, probably two saws, usually both silkies. One of them a full size Sugoi, the other one a, a medium sized Pocket Boy, Pocket Boy 170 or something multiple knives, an axe. So if the axe goes down, I might pack the head out with me. Unless I have a down a day of downtime where I'm not doing anything, I'm probably not gonna waste any energy rehafting that axe. It's not a necessity for fire. It's more of a, a luxury, really. So this is gonna kinda gonna be a quick and dirty um, rehafting. I've got a theory on how I wanna do it. The head is definitely a slightly different shape than what I was expecting. I'll show you that in a minute. We'll talk about that. But it's going to be difficult to fit it to a piece of wood in any sort of fashion that's going to be functional long term, especially for splitting. You'd still be able to chop with it, but the idea I have in my head, chances are splitting is not going to work very well. We'll test that all out if we get her fitted back onto a stick. Anyways, long and short of it is basically what I'm going to do is cut a round piece of sugar maple, less than ideal. Uh, a little bit wider than the the eye, the, the way that they have this. It's a, more of a, a groove or a slot that it's going to have to slide into. So a little oversized for what the groove is. We'll flatten the outer edges out. You'll see what I mean. And uh, try and lash this head on to a piece of hardwood. So I do have my small top handle climbing saw here. It's right there. Right there little echo. I've got a couple hand saws. We'll try doing that, but hardwood is, it's hard. Sugar maple, people call it rock maple. It is a hard tree. So working it down by hand would take a long time. That's another reason why ash would be a little more ideal for this. Uh, it's got a little more flex to it. It's probably not as prone to cracking and uh, it'd be slightly softer than the sugar maple, easier to work with. There are lots of ash trees here, but they're all pretty young and they're all green and I want to try and find something that's dry and hard because if you use a piece of green wood it's going to change shape maybe shrink a little bit that might be a good thing it might tighten it on the head it might give the head a little bit of space to play in there so we're going to go dry hardwood as dry as we can get I'm going to go grab that uh, piece of branch that I was handling earlier in front of the camera probably cut her about 24 inches maybe 30 to start and then we'll whittle her down a little bit and I'm going to use some power tools Obviously, it's nothing that you can't do with hand tools. It's just going to take you more time. So, you know, if you're Dick Pranoki, Dick Pranoki, however you pronounce that, and you live in a cabin in Alaska and you spend your days whittling, carving, and doing carpentry by hand, yeah, you're going to bang off a nice axe handle. If you're just hopping through the woods or if you are actually down and out and you need it, you're going to do whatever you can, probably as fast as possible to get that axe back into service. Maybe you need it to defend yourself against animals or most aggressive animal on the planet, another human, and you need to get that axe back into a, a workable weapon. So 
this is going to be more a, a practical, quick and dirty, get that axe head back onto something. The general theory of I carry a, a Grand Force Brooks or a Wetterling's traditional axe with an eye because it's easier to rehandle. Go out and try that. I mean, I, I'm probably going to try that here too, but I can't see, especially if you only have, if you're an ultralight guy and you've got like a Mora or something with you, maybe a handsaw, maybe not, and the head of the axe. That's going to be a pain in the ass to rehaft an axe. You, you're just, you're going to be down an axe. You're going to have a broken handle. You're going to waste so much time and energy in a real survival situation. You don't have that luxury. You need food. You don't have the calories to spare. It's got to be quick. It's got to be dirty. It's got to be functional. That's enough talking. I'm going to get that piece of stick. Let's get to work. Piece of stick. I'm going to go get that limb. <laughs> Let's get to work. All right, folks, so this is what we're looking at for supplies. I've got the Ontario SP-52, almost a machete, large knife. There's our piece of sugar maple. It's about 32 inches long. Silky Pocket Boy 170, um, some cordage, paracord there. Obviously, if you're in the bush and you expect to be doing any sort of bushcrafty type stuff, you're probably gonna have cordage. If you don't, this isn't gonna work. <laughs> Um, there's the cheater saw, the echo. I did use that to cut that handle, but we're going to try and use hand tools from now on. And here is the head. Focus. The head of the Fiskers. Now it's still quite hot, but if you can see that, there's a ridge here. I was hoping this was just going to be one flat sheer wall that a, a piece of wood could rest up against, but they're both tapered, both on an angle. So we've got an angle on the back there. This has all sorts of little cuts in it for traction for the molded handle, but obviously it's not gonna be ideal for attaching a piece of wood to again. So there's a step there, a step there, and another step there which really is gonna be a pain in the ass. I think I'm just gonna try and line up with the second step here. So that's gonna be one outer edge of our handle. That's gonna be the back edge of the handle. Same thing on the other side. Um, I intend to cut or split the piece of maple there so that this can drop into a groove in the top and then we'll try and lash it on there as tight as possible. That's the plan. Let's get to work. This thing is still way too hot to touch. And you can even see there's a bit of rot in here already. If you actually want to do this properly, you'd need to find something way oversized, split a clear board out of it, and then start making a handle out of that. Now that, that's gonna take days. Quite frankly, I'm not into it. I would sooner go buy a new ax or call Fiskers and tell them to warranty their broken handle. So again, this is what we're working with. So, okay, so I went and got myself a marker out of the fire and I've just marked roughly the orientation that I kind of want this. Maybe more like that. There's a bit of a curve in this stick, so I'm just trying to figure out which way I want it, but I don't think it's gonna matter anyways. This ain't gonna be pretty. So I marked the orientation that I want. Now we're going to take the knife, I'm going to stand this up, and we're going to baton the edges off of this and try and uh, get rid of some of this bulk, make it more like a, a handle shape than a round log. The stump is pretty soft, but it's the best surface I could find around here. We're just going to start taking the edge off of this. I got a little piece of beech hardwood baton. This is, that's actually not that bad, but it's a time consuming process. Hammer a bigger piece off. Now, you know, a great tool for this would probably be an ax. However, ours is broken. This is more bushcrafty than I thought it'd be.
kind of straighten her out a little bit here. Strip a bit of that bark off of there. Substantial amount of material that I've just removed there. That was surprisingly quick. I figured I'd have the chainsaw out doing this right away, but not too bad, not too bad. So I was gonna try and find two trees to kind of use as a clamp, but I think the best way for me to do this is gonna be to get her up on this log, get a knee on it. And we're gonna cut, these are gonna be the outer edges that are contacting those ridges on the head of the ax. So this is uh, fine enough work that I'm gonna do with the saw. Kind of marked down here how deep I want these. Now the good thing about sugar maple is that hopefully it'll be hard enough it's not gonna roll off those edges too easily as long as we can get her tight. I'm thinking a good hard right angle a piece of sugar maple might sit down in the bottom of that groove but we'll see. I'm not a huge huge fan of these little silkies. I'm just gonna cut that off. Just trying to make a correction on my angle of operation here. The angle of my dangle. As I was saying, I'm not a huge fan of these small silkies. I climb as an arborist with silky saws, but the big ones, this is probably the third blade I've had on this. Third blade I've had on this, gotta keep getting distracted. And they break very easily, especially if you're trying to do slightly bigger work with them. I have used them to cut up a moose before. Two moose, work fairly well probably are also not meant to rip. These are meant to cross cut the grain, these saws. So this is really working, this little silky. It's doing a pretty good job though. My arm's just getting friggin' tired. Short strokes on these little blades too, right? It's just kind of inefficient. Longer's better. Oh, that side turned out much nicer. Much happier that. Okay, I'm gonna go get the head and my marker. All right, phase two. This thing is still too friggin' hot to handle. Just about, anyways. So, you can see what I mean by the width there. And I am off by a mile. We're down at the, the second step. Not even this step, so that's unfortunate. Very, very precise. I can see the bottom line there. I'm trying to just line it up with the bottom edge of the axe without having to touch it here. We'll start small. We want it to be tight anyways, so I'm going to go on the inside of these two lines. I'm going to cut a slot out for this little guy to drop into. And I may wind up getting the chainsaw for this because it'd be way faster. Okay, I'm gonna just upgrade my saw here just so this doesn't take all afternoon. I got the sugoi here. This is a curved blade. So I'm probably gonna have to finish off the last little bit with the pocket boy, but this thing is going to cut way faster. Almost feels slower. It is a heavily used saw. I use that every day. I just don't like the ergos on this little guy as much. I get my finger up on top here like it's a hand file. The curved handle on the sugoi I can really get a lot of leverage with. It's a little better. She's not pretty, folks. <sighs> Nothing comes easy. Nothing comes free. The curves got crossed from 
side to side here. It ain't perfect. But we're getting there. Things. These little silky blades are junk. This is now like the fourth blade that I've broken. I've broken three of these, this is the fourth blade on the saw. And I just broke the first tooth off it. They're too, they're too short to do any real work. You try and do stuff, anything substantial with them, they break. I love Survival Russia. Lars on Survival Russia, it's a great channel. He says he's got these little silkies. He's never broken a blade on one of them. I find that ridiculous. Maybe he's a little more careful what saws he uses to do what work. But I cannot see if you use these little pocket boys any amount. Try and push their capabilities a little bit, the size of work they can do, they break. As much as I would love to make the next cut with this bent hand saw, I'm just not feeling it. I don't have to, I have the chainsaw. So we're gonna get this curve carved out of here, double time move on to the next step of this project or else I'm gonna have six hours of film to edit and I'm really not feeling that. Power tools. Now that, now that right there is easy. I'm definitely not dead center there. Pretty close to what I want though. we will shave just a wee bit off the top of this side. Well, she's a, she's a little better fit than I thought it would be. A little loosey-goosey in there, for now. Oh, it's even started to split there already. Let's do a little bit of shaping, and then we'll lash that head on. Still not perfect, but feels a lot more like an axe handle now. I think the curve that way makes more sense than backwards, eh? Yeah. Definitely curving forward. There we go. Okay, I'm just about ready to wrap this. I just want to cut a little notch here. Little notch here. There we go. Just for that paracord to sit up against. There we go. Ready to receive paracord. I'm going to dunk this in water so that the fibers expand and stretch because if we put this on dry, and then it uh, rains on my paracord or it gets wet overnight, whatever, the fibers will expand and it'll stretch out and it'll get loose. I'm just going to toss in the cooler and dunk it here and then I'm going to tie it around this tree so we can pull on it while we're tensioning it. We'll be right back. Work as much water into there as we can, get her sponged right up. Just do a little running bowline here. There we go. She's anchored. I'm going to pull out a length. I'll flip the camera around and then we'll start wrapping that axe. All right, so I'm going to start with another running bowline on this end through the two notches that I just cut in the top. And throw a loop on the top of the handle. 
want to get this one good and tight to start. Good and tight. I'm going to pull. I'm going to really load this stuff up. And then I am going to go to the top immediately across the bottom. And we're just going to alternate corners in an X pattern here, keeping a good bit of tension on that. You can really pull on these. And on the top again. handle it in the bush, you totally can. You can do anything you want. If you want to accomplish something bad enough, you're going to get it done. If you need it bad enough, you're going to get it done. Now we're going to, going to call that good for wraps at the top and everything here feeling pretty solid. So I'm going to finish it off on the bottom. I'm going to try and just kind of tuck the end in and wrap it a bunch of times. I might have to tape it. I, I don't know how I'm going to tie this off really. It's probably not going to look super cool, but I'll try. So I'm going to switch directions with a half hitch here, like so. Just continue to wrap over the old line. Try and keep this in frame so you guys can see how I'm cobbling this together. That's pretty tight. So, cobbling, yes, cobbling together. I guess what I should have done is on these wraps, I should be subsequently tucking it under itself. So, like so, well that really is kind of holding itself there. Just fumbling away, doop doop doop. This just goes, you know, people are going to knock me for this, but you don't have to be a friggin' rocket scientist to do stuff like this. All those idiots saying you can't re-half the Fiskers. Well, I'm about to prove you wrong, I think. I should probably be on the back of the axe here so it doesn't... Yes. That's the solution. Right there. Someone's probably going to have an idea that would have made this a lot simpler for me, but just kind of learning on the fly. Sometimes from a different perspective, someone with different experience sitting there watching this, I have a brilliant solution. Back up under here. We'll just maybe try and timber hitch that. Just wrap it around itself a bunch of times. There we go. Secure! I wouldn't be swinging this in any direction where there's anyone standing. Because when a head flies off an axe, mid-swing, sometimes it goes pretty far. So there you go. Got that wrapped. That's the beast. Not perfect but probably gonna chop stuff. There she is, a rehafted Fisker's head. Not artwork, but going to be functional, I think.
Okay folks, here is the Fisker's head that you can't refit in the bush, fit it back onto a handle. Let's see if it actually performs, it stays attached. Nice dead sugar maple here. So far, feels like a regular axe, rock solid. This is a big old hard tree. It's a little bit unwieldy. Feels a little more cumbersome than a regular ax. Because the handle's kind of strike in the tree here, but. Back cut. Give it a little push. Timber! There you go, guys. Wow. <laughs> I will say, heating up this steel has clearly ruined the steel. That just rolled the whole edge of this axe. So, you can definitely rehandle the Fisker's head, but you will ruin the temper of the steel burning it off in a fire. Some of this lashing has gotten a little bit looser, but I just cut down a five inch sugar maple, dead sugar maple. And that's interesting. So, as you can see, she stayed together for that bit of work, but there's a bit of something going on right here. The paracord has started to fray. I don't know if that's, I could feel it striking the edges of the stump when I was swinging. This is a little wider than the, the head, so it's awkward. It's a little unwieldy. So that's getting loose, obviously, which I didn't expect that to stay super tight. I think most of that's just the end of the strands. I'll cut a couple of pieces with the chainsaw and uh, we'll do some splitting with it. I'm not going to touch that lashing on the, uh, the handle. We're just going to go until it breaks or I do. This is uh, the same tree we just chopped down with the axe. I got three pieces here, about 16 inches long, five inch diameter, pretty straight grain. Shouldn't be uh, anything for a regular axe to sneeze at. This thing, it's, I pulled it out of that piece that I parked it in, the stump over there, and it is actually a fair bit looser. Um, this cordage is just going everywhere. I have to tuck this piece in, it's driving me nuts. It is a fair bit looser, definitely, than when I wrapped it, but we'll see uh, how long it stays attached for. The paracord and being limited to these types of resources, I don't think that's very realistic. I mean, unless you're way way out in the middle of like you're way up in northern Ontario or Russia or somewhere that you're a hundred kilometers away from civilization this might be all you have but generally speaking there's not many places you can go in the world where you're not going to find 
some type of wire, mechanics wire, steel cable. I have mechanics steel wire in the truck. I could wire this back up, but, and it probably would hold. Um, we'll see. I'm running out of space on my card, so it might be a project for another day. But uh, yeah, there's, if you scavenge <laughs> material, you'll be able to find a way to probably fit this onto something in a little more secure of a manner than just this paracord, which looks like it's gonna blow through on these, uh, these coming swings here. So let's see if it splits. Well, it definitely split it. It bounced right off it, but <laughs> that's the thing with the handle being wider than the head. I mean, it's uh, no problem with this straight grain maple. I mean, if it's all you have, that's beating the shit out of that. If it's all you have, you're gonna do whatever you have to do to get this working again if you really need it. But she's uh, a little worse for wear after these few strikes. We've got about 10 minutes of room left on this video card, so I'll show you guys what she looks like after. As you can see, it works. It's not perfect, it's not beautiful, but it works. It splits. Chops trees, bounces off stuff. Can even choke up and patch it with it. Made short work of that stuff, that's for sure. Real short work. Try and beat her up as much as we can here. Pretty much. Wood. As you can see, other than using the chainsaw to cheat and cut these blocks, I've actually just did a fair bit of work. Did a shitty rehandle job. As you can see, she got smashed up pretty good right there. I definitely had a couple impacts right here. The cordage actually looks surprisingly good. It's loosened off, that bit popped off there. That's probably my piece that I secured it with. And you can probably get an idea for how badly that edge is rolled over. I see a few strikes here. Cordage is all still intact, the head's still on the axe, the handle's still one piece, so it's a semi-success, I would say. Try and get a, yeah, that should give you a pretty good idea of how rolled over that edge is. Just ruined the steel putting it in that fire. Ruined it. I doubt a Grand Force would do that. You'd still probably, it's not definitely not good for the temper of the axe. Yeah, same on that side. Definitely not good for the temper of the axe on a Grand's Force either, but I think it would hold an edge better than that. That is just rolled, 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 rolled right over. Try and get it in the light. Big old messy mess. Nasty. So it would appear that you can actually rehaft the Fisker's axe. Not in the traditional method. Probably not with a lot of longevity, but again, if you really needed it, it was your only option. You scavenge around, find yourself some wire or, you know, some tools, some better ways to secure it. You can do anything. You could fit that to a piece of metal pipe if you wanted or something like that. Drill through it and bolt it on. Now we're talking, you're going to have to have some access to tools and resources here. But even in the bush, uh, with a bit of cordage, you scavenge up some wire or something like that, wrap her up tight, it'll work. Here comes a train, it's about to get loud. Thanks again guys for all the support, all the nasty comments, I don't care. I love you. we'll see you next time. <laughs>